Hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is John Cashman and uh, I'm here to talk to you today about Irish whiskey. Today's presentation is brought to you by Invest NI and the Irish Whiskey Association. And we've titled it um, Irish Whiskey, a journey through depth and diversity. Um, a little bit of background about myself. I'm uh, over 20 years working in the Irish whiskey industry. Um, primarily as a, as a brand ambassador and global brand ambassador, and I was formerly global brand ambassador for all whiskies with uh, Beam Centauri. Um, I started in the industry in the late 90s, and I've worked for a lot of the major Irish whiskey companies and seen a lot of change over the past uh, 20 odd years. So today, I want to uh, bring you through a journey of Irish whiskey, um, explaining the history, the great heritage of, of, of Irish whiskey, and what makes Irish whiskey Irish whiskey? Um, explain the depth and diversity that we're using in the title. And also, uh, thankfully, uh, sample a few um, sips of Irish whiskey. I've, I've three cracking drams um, to, to sample with you. Um, all very unique, but all Irish whiskey. So I suppose to begin, <coughs> we need to talk about the history of whiskey in Ireland and it's it doesn't come as any surprise I mean here in Ireland we've been talking about this quite a lot the fact that we invented whiskey um, now we didn't invent alcohol um, alcohol was we believe invented in the Middle East somewhere around modern day Iran Iraq old Mesopotamia um, even the word alcohol comes from the Arab language alcohol um, but it was with the uh, movement of uh, these Arab people who um, moved to North Africa and became known as the Moorish people and following the fall of the Roman Empire, the Moorish people moved into southern Spain and took over a lot of southern the Mediterranean countries around the south of Europe. Um, and it was around that time, so we're talking 8th, 9th century, 10th century, that Irish monks started traveling from Ireland, spreading Christianity. Ireland was known as the island of saints and scholars um, and uh, a real hub of Christianity um, uh, throughout, throughout Europe. And Irish monks traveled extensively, spreading Christianity. And in their travels, they discovered many different things and ideas and concepts, some of which they brought back with them when they returned to Ireland. And one of them was distillation. Um, Distilling in its simplest form is the separation of alcohol from water. It's quite easy. Um, alcohol has a lower boiling point than water. So if you have a mixture of the two and you boil them up, alcohol will come off before water. And certainly in the Arab world, distillation was being used for two main purposes. One, as a, as a medicine, uh, medicinal, as we know today, alcohol is a natural antibiotic or a natural antiseptic. But it was also used as a base for the perfume industry, as it still is to this day. And the Moors certainly were doing both. And when Irish monks discovered this, they saw the medicinal benefit of alcohol. And when they returned to Ireland, they started distilling. And the monks in Ireland were the educators. They were the, uh, not only the holy men, but you know, they were, they were the educators, the teachers, the brewers, the bakers, the farmers, the distillers, the doctors. And what they distilled, they needed to call something. And they didn't use the Arabic word alcohol, they used the Irish word from the Gaelic language, Ishkabaha, which literally translates as water of life. Ishka is the Irish word for water, Baha is the Irish word for life. Um, they called it that because this very, you know, simply distilled liquid looked like water, but when given to a sick person or an ill person, it cured them or it gave life back. Um, the water that gave life. Same word exists in many different languages, French eau de vie, uh, Scandinavia, aquavit, um, Latin aquavite. Um, so the Irish were producing this ishkaba, um, primarily medicinal purposes, um, very distant relative to what we would now class as uh, Irish whiskey. And the word whiskey comes from that Irish language, comes from that term ishkabaha. Because when the Normans invaded Ireland in the 12th century and quickly took over the country and established themselves here in Ireland, they uh, uh, loved the country, got to grips with lots of the culture, um, but struggled with the Irish language. And they could never quite pronounce Ishkabaha. And through, you know, history lessons, we've, we've heard that uh, 
instead of saying ishkabaha, they took that first word, ishka, that Irish word for water, which is spelled U-I-S-C-E. And uh, not knowing how to pronounce it correctly, pronounce it phonetically, and described it as iski. U-I-S-C-E, pronounced iski. And as the English language evolved from an early Anglo-Norman language, iski became fwiski with an F. And in the modern word, uh, whiskey. So not only did we invent the liquid, but we also invented the word. And it's one of those words that throughout my travels all over the world, um, any country I go to, I say the word whiskey. They know straight away what I'm talking about. So uh, it's, it's great to have that word in the, uh, from the Irish language. And Irish whiskey really was, uh, grew in popularity. Um, people realised you didn't have to be ill in order to drink it and social consumption of, 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 of Ishkabah or whiskey began. And throughout all the centuries, up until the 20th century, we have different examples of famous people writing about Irish whiskey. We know Queen Elizabeth I of England. Uh, it was said that her favourite drink was, uh, was Irish whiskey when it was either Sir Walter Raleigh or Francis Drake stopped off in Cork on one of their expeditions, um, was presented with a, a cask of the Earl of Cork's finest Ishkabaha, presented it to the Queen and she loved it. Tsar Peter the Great, the Tsar who unified all of Russia, said, of all the wines of the world, the Irish spirit is the best. The word Ishkabaha even exists in the first dictionary. Uh, English dictionary, uh, Samuel Johnson, has an entry in it for Irish whiskey. And he describes it as, and I'm paraphrasing a bit here, but he describes it as a distilled spirit from Ireland, more flavoursome, not as firesome as its English counterpart. Interesting. Firstly, Irish whiskey is in the first dictionary. But secondly, even then there was seen as a difference in the style of whiskey that you would get on from Ireland to the style that you might get from Scotland or what then they said was England. Um, and there is a very good reason for that, and I will get into that in, in, in due course. But certainly by the 18th and 19th century, Irish whiskey was really the dominant style of whiskey in the world. The distilleries in Ireland were far larger than anything you would find anywhere else. Um, by, by the time Alfred Barnard travelled around Britain and Ireland um, visiting all the distilleries, um, he visited 27 distilleries in, in Ireland, and that was in the 1880s. And uh, some of them, if they were around today, would be some of the largest distilleries in the world still. Um, however, Irish whiskey suffered. It hit a peak by the 1880s, 1890s, but then through a number of different events, none of which really are, com are, 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 are combined, but, or none of which are, are connected, but when combined, essentially acted like a, like a perfect storm and practically destroyed the Irish whiskey industry. One of them was the invention of a new method of producing whiskey. Traditionally, Irish whiskey was always produced in the pot still, getting from the old Alembic from the, from the Arab times. And Anais Coffey, of course, an Irishman, uh, an excise officer, um, in, certainly invented if, or patented, if not invented, a new may of, way of producing whiskey using the what was known as the coffee still or the patent still or the continuous still, and was able to produce more whiskey far more quickly and far more efficiently than the old pot still method. And a lot of distilleries refused to go with that. It didn't quite have the character. It didn't have quite have the same flavor profile as the traditional pot still whiskey. So a lot of Irish distilleries just said, no, they weren't gonna use it. Whereas in Scotland, other distilleries did start using it and started blending that lighter liquid with, we'll say the stronger flavored uh, um, malt whiskies or pot still produced whiskies. And the idea of blending began and Scottish whiskey started getting a little bit of traction. Um, you then really have the 20th century, um, where you have uh, Ireland's War of Independence, followed by civil war and then uh, economic war from Britain. Um, the biggest single market for Irish whiskey in the world was, of course, the British Empire, the British Commonwealth. When you gain independence, you lose that market. Um, at the exact same time, you have prohibition in the United States. The second largest market for Irish whiskey started in 1919. It is estimated that pre-prohibition, over 60% of all whiskey sold in the United States of America was Irish. Prohibition put an end to that. Now, people didn't stop drinking, in fact. Some people say that people drank even more uh, during Prohibition than they did before Prohibition. And what they drank is what they drank pre-Prohibition. So they went out and tried to get their Irish whiskey. And of course, 
They weren't getting real Irish whiskey. They were getting rot gut. They were getting cheap knockoff moonshine passed off as Irish whiskey. And I mean, go on Google Images and you look at Prohibition and you see many of the police cracking open barrels and bottles and a lot of them have Irish sounding names. You know, Aaron Gabra Irish whiskey or Shamrock's Finest Irish whiskey or something along those lines. Um, but none of which had anything to do with Ireland. So Irish whiskey got a bad reputation and an entire generation of people grew up thinking Irish whiskey was awful. And then by the time Prohibition ends in 1933, the Irish whiskey industry had really contracted. And we weren't in a position to try to take advantage of the US opening up again. And by the time you did start building it up, World War II started in 1939 and the markets closed again. So you have these number of different things that essentially brought the Irish whiskey industry to its knees. To put it into context, it's estimated that in the 1800s there were over a thousand distilleries dotted around Ireland. Not all legal, but about a thousand sites producing uh, some type of whiskey. We know for a fact in the 1880s from Barnard's book, he visited 27 large distilleries. By the end of World War II, there were six distilleries left operating on the island of Ireland. By the 1960s, that was down to four. And by the 1970s, that was down to two. And those two distilleries then came together to form the one company called Irish Distillers. And they controlled the production of Irish whiskey until the late 1980s, when a new distillery came on the line, a distillery called the Cooley Distillery, um, that, uh, that, that really shook things up. In the past few years, Irish whiskey has gone through an absolute renaissance. Um, there are over uh, 27 operational distilleries in Ireland today, uh, many more at the planning stages. Um, of the three whiskies that I'm going to be tasting later on, um, one of which is fully operational, one uh, hopes to be operational in uh, September of this year, and the third one certainly has, uh, has aspirations to open up a distillery in the, in the near future. So Irish, that's the history of Irish whiskey, a, a very brief uh, synopsis of the history of Irish whiskey. But what makes Irish whiskey? A lot of people say that every glass of Irish whiskey is a, a distillation of the whole island of Ireland. That all of Ireland is in every glass of Irish whiskey. You know, the green fields, the gentle rain, the dramatic history, the warmth, the approachability of the people, the legendary creativity is there in, in our whiskies. Irish whiskey is essentially a perfect reflection of authentic Irish character and personality. Now, how or what or, or why? Well, I, I always say Irish whiskey is Ireland in a glass. And Ireland is different to every other country around the world. Um, firstly, our geography, our climate. We're a small island off the west coast of Europe. We're quite a maritime um, uh, climate. However, we are embraced by the uh, Gulf Stream or the North Atlantic Drift, which comes from, you know, the Gulf of Mexico, diagonally across uh, the Atlantic, hits the west coast of Ireland, surrounds us and continues on up. As a result, the Irish climate is very much what I suppose NASA scientists would say, the Goldilocks. Uh, it's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's just perfect. Certainly for whiskey making, it's perfect. We get plenty of rain, which means uh, with great growing conditions. We grow some of the finest cereals in the world here in Ireland. Uh, magnificent barley, wheat, small amounts of rye, oats, um, all of these cereals that are used in the Irish whiskey making industry. We then have this moderate uh, climate, the summers not being too hot, I mean, if it hits above 25 degrees centigrade, we're happy. Winters never really gets below freezing very often. So whiskey has a much longer period of maturation. It's estimated that it's almost 20 to 25% longer maturation in Ireland than you get in, in Scotland and some of the other uh, major whiskey producing countries around the world. Um, then we have, uh, Irish whiskey is defined by a, uh, a geographic indication. So that gives, its, that gives its legal standing all around the world. <coughs> uh, 
And essentially a product can only be labelled and sold as Irish whisky if it has been fully distilled and matured on the island of Ireland for a minimum of three years in a wooden cask of some description. It can't be bottled any lower than 40% alcohol. So the law is very clear on what Irish whiskey is, and it's also clear on what Irish whiskey isn't. So if you see a bottle of something that says Irish style whiskey or Irish spirit or something, chances are it's not an Irish whiskey. But why is that important? Well, some of the things I want to touch on there are the, uh, the maturation. Because maturation is so important. I mean, there's always arguments. Some people say it's up to 60% of the final flavour of a whisky comes from what you mature it in and how long you mature it. I don't want to get into those technicalities, how much, how little. It doesn't really matter, but it does play an important part. And in Ireland, unlike other countries, we don't specify that it has to be oak. We say a wooden barrel or wooden cask, of which oak is an example. So that means we can use many types of different wood. That means we can use many types of barrels that have been used to hold some other type of uh, liquid, be it a fine wine or a sherry or a, a port or a um, rum or whatever. And some of the whiskies we'll, I'll be tasting now in a few minutes are classic examples of those finishings. And that means that Ireland really has become a world leader in the art of cask finishing. The other area where we excel is as an industry, we use probably more mash and gr more mashes and grain types than other whiskey industries. Irish whiskey itself is like an umbrella. It's a term. It's this 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 overarching term of, of, of this type of spirit that's produced in Ireland. And in this umbrella, there are four spokes. Each of these spokes is Irish whiskey, but they can stand alone as a definitive, distinctive style of whiskey produced in Ireland. And those four spokes are single malt whiskey, 100% malted barley produced in a pot still, either double or triple distilled from one distillery. Single grain whiskey, a mash primarily of some other cereal that isn't malted barley, generally produced in a column still from one distillery. Single pot still whiskey, unique to Ireland. Single pot still whiskey is a mash of malted and unmalted barley and up to 5% of some other cereal, oats or rye or maybe wheat, distilled in copper pot stills, either double or triple distilled, and matured for no less than three years on the island of Ireland. And then you have blended Irish whiskey, which is and can be a combination of two or three or from different distilleries of all those different types. So what we're gonna taste now are three different whiskies from three different distilleries that I hope will really give you an idea of this diversity and this depth that you get from Irish whiskey. Because Irish whiskey is far more than just one type. It's far more than one brand. It is a multitude and it is this, this multitude of brands coming together, this multitude of styles that define Irish whiskey and give us our complexity, our depth and our diversity. So the first whiskey I want to introduce you to is a blended Irish whiskey. It is, um, has been resurrected recently. It is called McConnell's Irish whiskey. McConnell's was an old traditional Irish brand from the 19th century. Um, originally founded in 1776, it was distilled in the Cromac distillery in Belfast. And it's one of the uh, famous old brands that was available certainly in the United States of America up until Prohibition. Beautiful bottle, lovely label, highlighting the harp, the national symbol of Ireland. You'll often see this image on um, posters and on mirrors, um, pub bric-a-brac all over the world. I mean, you might go into a bar in Vancouver and you'll see a sign for McConnell's Irish whiskey. Doesn't necessarily mean they have it, um, but uh, it, it, it's one of those iconic images of Irish whiskey. Um, so it this is um, aged for five years. It is a blend of malt and uh, Barley malt, malt whiskey, 
and grain whiskey and uh, matured in ex-bourbon barrels. Um, majority of Irish whiskies tend to begin in bourbon whiskey, not all, but bourbon whiskey barrels are uh, a popular maturation choice. Here, I'll put it. Now, let me see, there we go. So, uh, the glass I'm using actually is, a, is an Irish whiskey glass called a tua, um, which is the Irish word for nation or people. And um, the base of it, it's, it's my preferred glass for tasting whiskey. The base of it is um, the design of Skellig Michael, an island off the southwest coast of Ireland, which um, was an old monastery. Um, became famous in recent years as um, the island where um, Luke Skywalker was hiding um, in the last few uh, Star Wars movies. So uh, beautiful, beautiful um, glass. So McConnell's, what's it like? Lovely, sweet, subtle vanilla and citrus on the nose, I would say. A little bit of, little bit of white pepper, not black pepper. It's kind of a lighter, softer pepper. So I'd say white pepper on the nose. Yeah. It's the beauty of this glass. You can give it a good shake and nothing spells out. Lovely, soft, light Irish whiskey. Um, certainly earthy fruits. I get some 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 dark fruits there, maybe plums, uh, things like that going on. Butterscotch, the vanilla element coming through. Um, definitely, you'd expect that from a, from an ex bourbon barrel. That almost goes without saying, but it is it is certainly there. Nice oakiness as well. The five years is kind of a dryness just to the back, just to the back of your uh, of, of your mouth from the from the sip. Lovely sweet finish. Bit of oak sweetness coming back again. That sort of vanilla um, and certainly ripe fruits. Yeah, definitely sort of plums, dark ripe fruits. Um, yeah, just just very easy drinking blended Irish whiskey. And the majority of Irish whiskies um, around the world are blends. And Ireland is um, is quite famous for our blended whiskies. But as I said earlier, when talking about my umbrella, that's not all that we are, you know. And um, the next whiskey I want to introduce you to certainly might debunk a few uh uh, mistruths about Irish whiskey, where people think Irish whiskey has to be a certain way, and it in fact doesn't. Um, some of the misconceptions of Irish whiskey, I suppose, are um, people say, well, Irish whiskey has to be triple distilled. In Scotland, they double distill. In Ireland, they triple distill. Um, no, I mean, Ockintoshan in Scotland is triple distilled single malt. <coughs> and Ireland, with our rules and regulations, we don't actually specify how many times you need to distill. We say you can distill twice, you can distill three times. And double double distillation is, uh, okay, maybe not as prevalent as triple distillation, but it certainly is uh, a lot of brands um, uh, double distill. And the third whiskey we will taste is a double distilled single malt. But the second whiskey I want to introduce you to is from a brand new distillery. A distillery that I hope to be up and running by September of this year. Um, founded by a very uh, famous um, entrepreneur from the north of Ireland called uh, Terry Cross. And um, it is the Hinch Distillery. And the Hinch Distillery gets its name from uh, the town of Ballin the Hinch, which is in County Down. And County Down had a very long tradition of whiskey distilling. Um, in the late 17th, or sorry, late 18th century and up until the 20th century, there were seven um, distilleries in County Down. And County Down is, you know, renowned in song, the star of the County Down and the mountains of Morn and all of these things, a beautiful part of, uh, of uh, towards the north of Ireland. Um, and Hinch are very, very innovative in some of the whiskies that they're producing. Right now, they're sourcing all of their liquid from uh, different distilleries, and that gives them the opportunity to source some of the best mature liquids um, uh, available um, from Ireland. 
Um, they're not afraid to try different things and they have um, single malt whiskies, they have blended whiskies, they have single pot still whiskey, and they have this style, which debunks one of the other myths about Irish whiskey, that in Ireland, they don't use peat. They don't use smoke. One sixth of our landmass is peat, or as we call it, turf. It was always used in Irish whiskey in this industry and Irish whiskey making. It's just that the surviving whiskey or distilleries of Ireland in the 20th century stopped using it. They were importing coal and anthracite from the UK rather than using peat from, this, from the centre or the west of Ireland. But it was always a part of our whiskey distilling, um, of our whiskey distilling history. And Hinch, um, following on from the likes of Connemara, um, a, a famous peated Irish single malt whiskey, have introduced a peated malt. Um, and this is it here. It's uh, relatively new to the market. I think it came, I think, towards the end of last year. Looking forward to trying this because I love, I love peated whiskies. Mm, it's heavily peated, I can tell you that. I'm guessing this is up to uh, over 50 parts per million at... To begin with, there's a good whiff of peat coming through on it. Now this whiskey is triple distilled, so it is a triple distilled peated single malt whiskey. Certainly immediate strong peat flavours, but there is undertone of fruit just there. Again, bourbon barrel matured. You got that vanilla sweetness coming through, but certainly almost like sweet tar, dry smoke, woody nose, perhaps. Mm. <coughs> Beautiful. <coughs> Sorry, you went down there. Just went down the wrong my throat there good whiskey great whiskey um <clears throat> lovely fruit undertones hint of licorice i think um but this yeah this whiskey is potential it's young there's no denying that it is a it is very much a young whiskey but phenomenal flavors great peat really really good and lingering um, for such a young whiskey it it lasts um a good while i'm still getting that lovely smoky taste there um at the back of my throat um delicious whiskey certainly i'm really looking forward to uh what they bring out in 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 the future um really exciting distillery um i know they're 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 looking to triple distill but they will also <clears throat> be double distilling as well I think primarily they're going to focus on on, on malt whiskey in the future, but um, the uh, certainly I, I believe the door is open for experimentation and trying different things, and uh, it'll be exciting to see what they what they come up with um, in the near future. Mm, lovely mellow soft finish, and then the final whiskey I want to try is. Again, another old established brand of Ireland, Dunville's. Dunville's um, originally was from the Royal Irish Distilleries, um, established in 1808. Um, very, very popular. In fact, one of the most popular Irish whiskies uh, around the world at the turn of the 20th century. Um, then disappeared around the 1930s. The distillery uh, closed down and for a long period of time, you could only get Dunville's um, from auction sites and things like that. And then the Ecklandville Distillery was established in, I think, 2012. Um, it was the first new distillery to open in Northern Ireland in uh, over 125 years. And they resurrected this brand, this old uh, heritage brand of Irish whiskey. And this is the, <coughs> excuse me, Dunville's 12-year-old uh, malt whiskey, PX cask, Pedro Jimenez cask, matured. PX is a very sweet dessert wine from the south of Spain. And it's very difficult to get right. Um, PX can overpower a whiskey very, very quickly due to the um, intense sweetness coming through on it. But uh, this one just works perfectly. This is a multi-award winning whiskey. And uh, just this year, 2020 World Whiskey Awards, this got the gold medal. 
Irish Whiskey Awards last year, 2019, October of last year. This was named Best Irish Whiskey 12 Years and Younger. So really, really quality Irish Whiskey. <coughs> and the nose? Oh, lots of tropical and orchard fruits. They're all there. Light pepper. Bit of oak. And that Christmas cake, that sweet spice that you're going to get from Pedro Jimenez. Lovely sweetness coming through, a, a viscous, a viscosity, uh, a word that I love using to describe it, a voluptuous nature. It really, it really just coats your mouth. Um, very simple, very Moorish, <laughs> I would say. Plenty of, uh, of dried fruit, raisins, currants, um, all of those. Juicy, chewy, phenomenal. A whiskey you could easily sit and drink all day. You can see why it's winning, winning all these awards. Um, yeah, just an oak dryness in the background, but uh, beautiful, beautiful whiskey. So there you have it, three very different, very distinct, but all Irish whiskies, from the light, fruity, approachable McConnell's to the peaty uh, malt whiskey of the Hinch and the nuanced, um, sweet, uh, voluptuous nature of the uh, Dunville's 12-year-old. Um, and that, in a nutshell, is this diversity I talk about when it comes to Irish whiskey. And not just in the styles of whiskey, but in the approachability, how you drink it. Either drink it straight like there as a base for a cocktail, not just an Irish coffee, but so many new cocktails, so many new mixologists across this country and all across the world producing amazing drinks from Irish whiskey. Um, also as an ingredient in, in, in cooking, making sauces, um, in a long drink, in a highball. There are a multitude of ways to enjoy Irish whiskey. Um, and Ireland is open. Um, our, a lot of our distilleries are open for visitors. If you're looking for more information on Irish whiskey, please visit Ireland 360, um, which uh, will give you an idea of the different distilleries that are open for visitors. Um, and, and come visit, enjoy our whiskey, um, in, uh, enjoy um, our company. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed this uh, talk. I look forward to answering any questions that you might have. And uh, once again, I'd like to thank Invest Northern Ireland and the Irish Whiskey Association for sponsoring this uh, short whiskey talk this evening. Thank you very much.